Hi there, my name is Marley and welcome to my September wrap up. In today's video, I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read in the month of September. I feel like this month was so long. I'm looking at the list of books that I read and I feel like I read some of them like ages ago. I think because September was such a busy month for me and I was traveling a lot around the city, out of the house a lot. I read a lot of these books on public transportation or just out of the house. So I was a little bit distracted, I think, during some of my reading this month, but I did manage to read nine books this month, which is pretty good because my average is typically eight books. As for genre, I read three nonfiction books, the first time ever reading nonfiction on my channel, one romance and five thriller. I read five ebooks and four physical books, five adult books and four young adult books, and my average rating was a 4.06. So as always, I'll talk about these books in the order of the lowest rated to the highest rated. So starting out, I read Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. And this was because I did a nonfiction reading vlog, which I will definitely link so you can go watch that if you didn't already. Basically, I read three different nonfiction books in that blog and this was my least favorite unfortunately I gave it three stars which still isn't too bad of a rating but yeah this book talked about attachment styles so there are three different types of attachment styles that you can have with your romantic relationships and that is a secure attachment style anxious or avoidant and so it just really talked about what each of those attachment styles looks like and then had advice for each of them and about how to go about certain situations that might come up if you have those attachment styles or are dating people with those attachment styles. This was interesting to a certain extent, but I did feel like it was quite outdated as this book did come out in 2010, I didn't realize. So a lot of like the terms they used and the way they talked about relationships was a little outdated, very binary. So it just wasn't my favorite. I also struggled to relate to a lot of it. I feel like a lot of the relationship situations weren't ones that I particularly have experienced. I feel like I might might have a secure attachment style and maybe this book is better for people who are anxious or, or avoidant but it was a little bit interesting for sure so I am glad that I read it and learned a little bit more about this topic it is a topic I'd like to learn more about with maybe a more like recent publication then we have a YA thriller called They'll Never Catch Us by Jessica Goodman. I read her first book called They Wish They Were Us last year or the year before, and I was a little bit disappointed with it. I think I only gave that one like a three star, which again is not terrible, but you know, not the best. This one I ended up giving 3.5 stars. I did enjoy it more than her first book, which is excellent news. I did quite enjoy this. We are following two sisters in this book, Stella and what's the other girl's name? Ellie. Two sisters who are both track stars, both on the track team. The older sister is the one that kind of gets more of the attention. She is really vying for a scholarship, but we find out something happened last year that has made her kind of like lose hope of getting a scholarship and she had to go to this special program to manage her anger and stuff like that. The younger sister is also keeping a secret about something that happened over the summer. So they both kind of have some anger issues, some secrets that they're keeping, and they're both just very competitive and ambitious and wanna try and get a scholarship from running. And then this new girl starts at the school who is an excellent runner, like even better than them. And they both kind of end up befriending this girl. I think her name was Mila. They both kind of have their own relationships with this girl and then she goes missing. It's sort of a murder mystery situation of who killed Mila or where did she go? Both of the sisters are kind of suspects, but we're also hearing from both of their perspectives as well. I like this more than Jessica Goodman's first book because I just liked the characters more. I quite liked following these two characters. I liked that it was a sister story and seeing their relationship and all the family stuff that they have going on. But it did have a similar thing to her first book where it's not very focused on the thriller aspects. There are definitely YA thrillers that are way more thrillery, way more tense and like focused on the murder mystery. And her books definitely feel a little bit more contemporary or like a tense contemporary or a mysterious contemporary. I'm still gonna keep calling them YA thrillers, but just so you kind of know what kind of books she has, 
they would probably be a better fit for maybe like a younger audience or someone who's just trying to get into YA thrillers. But I definitely enjoy this. Definitely a quick, easy read. It's just not exactly what I look for in YA thrillers. I like there to be a little bit more focus on the murder mystery and have characters who are a little bit more focused on that as well. Then we have another Jessica Goodman book and that is The Counselors. This is her third book and newest book and her best book in my opinion. I ended up giving this four stars but I did rate it a little bit higher than it probably deserves because I had a sort of bias with something in the plot which is a spoiler so I won't say what it is but it just kind of tipped the scale up a little bit for me. But this book is really intriguing. It takes place at a camp which is always a fun setting and our main character's name is Goldie and her parents work at this camp. It's kind of like a Mitchy situation from Camp Rock. Both of her parents work here at this very prestigious camp that only rich people go to, but she's able to go because her parents work there. So every summer she's around all these like rich kids and since they were kids, she's been friends with these two girls specifically. At the beginning of this book, it is kind of their final year at the camp as they are now like going off to college. And our main character, Goldie, has some secrets that have happened throughout the school year that she is keeping from her camp friends. So there's some mystery uh, surrounding her background. And then a teenager, ends up dead at this camp. Not a camper, but someone from the town that this camp is at. So then there's a murder mystery of who killed this boy and um, does it have something to do with the camp or our main character? You know how it goes. I do think it was very predictable. I do find that with all of her books that they're pretty predictable twists, nothing amazing. But again, maybe that's why it's better for a younger audience who hasn't read that many thrillers yet, but still a very fun time throughout the whole journey. There's definitely some annoying things about this character <laughs> um, and like miscommunication and stuff like that, but it was still a fun time. So I still liked it. Now moving back to nonfiction, I also read Ace by Angela Chen. This is basically about asexuality. The author is talking about her experience as someone who identifies as ace, what it was like growing up and different experiences she's had with dating. She also interviews a bunch of other ace people that are in different places throughout the ace spectrum as it is a spectrum. This is very interesting to read as someone who is an ace just to learn more about it. It definitely helped me understand it better. And I think it would really, really be great for people who do think that they might identify as ace. I think it'd be really helpful just based on um, hearing about other people's experiences and how validating it is to hear about other ace experiences. If you are questioning your sexuality, I really recommend it. But yeah, I found it very informative, very easy to read, quick. I liked hearing from all of these different people's perspectives and not just the authors. So yeah, this was a good four star read for me. Then I read The Shadows by Alex North. This is the author of The Whisper Man and I really enjoyed that book when I read it a couple years ago. I also quite enjoyed this one. I also gave it four stars. At one point I did consider rating it lower. This is one of the books I was reading when I was out and about and very like distracted in my life. And so I knew that probably affected my reading experience a little bit. So I still did give it a four. This is an interesting one. <laughs> God, what was this one? I'm trying to remember the, the initial premise of this and how to describe it because it is kind of a weird one. I'll say it deals with dreams. It deals with dark themes. But our main character is this kid who, when he was younger, some boys died that he was friends with, but he survived. And so now it's years later and his mother is sick. So he goes back to this hometown, even though he has not been back since that incident happened, which you kind of find out more about the incident and the killings as the book goes on. But he's back because of his mom. And when he's back, he, you know, finds certain things in his house that are suspicious. And he hears that there's some other murders going on in the area that are similar to the ones that happened when he was a kid. We are also following a detective perspective where we really find out more about those other murders. I'm pretty sure it's the same detective that was in The Whisper Man, but I couldn't quite recall, but I'm pretty sure it was. And so I think these books are kind of connected. They did mention The Whisper Man at some point. So I think Alex North is making this kind of thriller world. <laughs> but yeah, that's the initial premise, but I'll say it deals with like dreaming and lucid dreaming. I don't even want to say a lot of the themes because I don't want to spoil 
and I can't remember what's spoilery and what's not. It had some good twists or some kind of annoying twists too, but I do feel like you were able to constantly theorize about what's going on. It had a little bit of like, is this a paranormal thing happening right now? Or is there some sort of like realistic explanation? Which I think those are always fun. Definitely be a good one to read during October because of that. Then I read The X Talk, another four star read. This is by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And I read this for my personal book club and I really had fun with this. This is a romance that is for me, that is for my tastes. So if you feel like you have romance book tastes similar to me, definitely check this out. Very excited to keep reading from this author. But yeah, if you for some reason didn't hear about this book, it is about these two people who work at a radio station that is not doing so hot financially. They're starting to make some cuts to budgets, layoffs, things like that. And so our main character, I think her name was Shay, comes up with this sort of dating radio show idea to try and like save herself and save her job. And her boss likes the idea of it and makes her and this other guy who of course she does not like <laughs> that works at her radio station, he makes them do the show together. And the premise of the show is to have two exes who have previously dated give dating advice and host a dating show together. The only thing is these two people did not date before. So they are pretending to be exes. So it's like a fake dating, but not really because they're pretending that they have dated and then broken up. Very fun and I feel like it delivered on that fun idea. I think what made me like this book so much is I just really liked the characters. What was the guy's name? I think his name was Dom, Dominic. I really liked him as a love interest and then I really liked Shay. You know, sometimes book characters can be annoying, especially in romance. I didn't think they were. I really understood their motivations. I really liked the dynamic between the two where they were sort of rivals and didn't like each other. And then you see that mutual respect and friendship grow and then, more than friends. I just think it was really cute. There was a little bit of spice, but not too much because you know, I don't want too much of that. It was just a really cute, fun time. So I highly recommend that as a romance. One of my favorite books I read this month was People Like Us by Dana Meal or Mille. I'm not quite sure how to say that, but this is a YA thriller and definitely an underrated one. I don't hear that many people talk about it and I feel like you should be checking it out if you are into this genre. But this is about our main character, Kay, and she goes to this kind of prestigious boarding school but in a classic, <laughs> classic plot, plot line, um, her family is not rich and she really needs this like soccer scholarship, blah, blah, blah. But, but she is popular and has this sort of group of girlfriends. And at the very beginning, we see that they are sneaking off after this party down by the lake and are gonna like skinny dip or swim or something. And there is a dead body in the water that they come across a dead girl who is around their age and seems most likely to be a student at their school our main character doesn't seem to recognize her at first she does end up being someone at their school that her and some of her friends kind of might maybe have connections to of course so there is this murder mystery investigation going on and since our main character was a witness or like helped find the body. She's definitely involved in this investigation. Then she gets an email from the deceased basically saying like, here's a link to this website. You're gonna have to, well, I don't know if she says you have to solve these riddles, but there's basically a bunch of like poems slash riddles that she has to solve and she has to like follow the instructions or else some secrets are gonna get revealed about her past. Because of course our main character has some mysterious past uh, regarding her family and stuff. So of course our main character doesn't want this information getting out. So she has to solve these little poems and then follow the instructions. It's basically a like 13 reasons why like hit list of a bunch of these girls who had done something bad to the deceased. And she's basically like getting revenge for the girl who died, if you know what I mean. So there's a mystery of like, is that letter really from the dead girl or is it someone else pretending to be her? It's this whole thing. It's this whole very interesting mystery. And I just think it was such a fun time. I gave it four stars just because the ending was a little bit lackluster. One of those things where it was a bit of a predictable ending got wrapped up pretty quickly. It's like the author was doing so much. And then by the end was like, I'm just gonna quickly like just end this. <laughs> but yeah, really good if you like YA thrillers, like Truly Devious, A Good Girl's Got a Murder, or if you like the show Pretty Little Liars and stuff like that. Now for my five star reads, I actually ended up giving five stars to Shy by Annie Ridout. This was the 
third nonfiction book that I read this month and obviously my favorite. This was about being shy and how you can be successful. Basically just describing how it is not this huge character flaw that people make it out to be and it actually can be a good quality for a bunch of different reasons. It does give some advice on how to get past your shyness though, if that is something you want to do, but it is pretty uplifting for if you are shy and encouraging and that kind of thing. And I really related to it as someone who grew up being shy and still is shy and has, you know, social anxiety struggles. I felt like it was nice to read from someone who has a lot of similar experiences to me as the author herself was shy. It's really inspired me to want to pick up more nonfiction, especially nonfiction about topics like psychology and like things that I might relate to. For the final book, it is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third book in the Inheritance Game trilogy. I uploaded a spoiler filled reading vlog of this. So if you have read the book, I want to hear my full review and full thoughts, you can check that out. As for my non-spoilery thoughts, well, I gave this one five stars. I really enjoyed it, but I enjoyed this whole series. So I think if you like the first two books, you're gonna keep liking it. If you didn't like the other two, you know, that's probably not gonna change. We had a lot of mysteries wrap up in the second one, so I was a little bit nervous going into this that we would have to like totally start out, start new mysteries. But she did a good job of connecting this to the other books. There were still a lot of connections and a lot of like hints and things that she had started in the previous books. However, I do feel like focusing on these same sort of narratives throughout three books did start to make this a little bit convoluted, a little bit hard to follow. I think if you read these books, try and binge them back to back so that you can remember all the little details. That would be my one kind of comment against this, but it was fine. Honestly, I was still able to understand everything and there were still some really good twists. I would feel like there was a little bit less romance in this one than the previous books, but that kind of makes sense as the relationship is sort of settled in this one. But yeah, these books are super easy to read, super quick and addicting. I really have a fun time with them. I just saw today that Jennifer Lynn Barnes is coming out with a another book in this series, apparently a couple more books following the Hawthorne brothers. What do you guys think about that? I have a little bit of mixed feelings. I feel like sometimes it annoys me with authors just keep publishing books in the same world and really just are milking it so much but at the same time i do really love these brothers and this family so i'm kind of okay with it i definitely will buy them yeah this whole family is really cute i love the found family aspects and as i said in my review video for this this is definitely a series if you want like a light a lighter hearted ya thriller series because it does have so many nice like family aspects found family friendship funny moments there is still some death and some darkness but it is more of a light-hearted series than something like say a good girl's guide to murder which we all know gets very dark so yeah i really had a fun time with this and that is my favorite book of the month so that's what i read in september i really had a good reading month nothing under three stars and my average rating was four stars so pretty good let me know if you have any thoughts about these books down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.